Hello and welcome to Just Pick Up a Pen. I'm your host, Doris Fulgraber, and today I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing designer, hand lettering artist, and type foundry founder, Libby Bischoff. Libby and I virtually met during a 10 week online class called Passion to Paid, where we learned how to come up with, refine, publish, and promote creative side projects. Mine was called Weight Loss Wisdoms. Libby's was called How to Save the Fucking World Without Dramatically Changing Your Life. And I thought just it was it was amazing. So she's based in Minnesota, uh, sorry, Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota. And you can find her online at LibbyBischoff.com. Her Insta is Libby Bischoff. And I'm super excited to talk to her about the whole lettering and typography process. So without further ado, let's jump in. <laughs> Wait, okay. And you're on. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Libby. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> so um, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your creative background with lettering. Where are you from? Where did it all start? Like, what's your earliest creative memory? All that good stuff. Um, so I'm from Minnesota. I grew up in a family that has there no, no creative anything like my sister's a lawyer my other sister is a bookkeeper my mom is a consultant like no one's creative so I'm kind of the oddball sometimes but um I grew up uh taking a lot of art classes just like generally wanted to be creative but my parents were like you should do something where you can like make a living and do something where you're not going to be a starving artist get a real job yeah yeah So then I kind of stumbled into graphic design that way. And I actually recently found a high school sketchbook of mine that had like a bunch of fonts drawn out, like a bunch of alphabets. They're terrible. They're absolutely terrible. (laughs) But but I, I totally forgot that like I had been doing that the whole time. So it's kind of funny. And then in college, um, I had taken a type design class and it was like mind blown. Like that's all I wanted to do. And I was like, so excited about it but it's there's not there's not a lot of resources for it so it's been like a slow learning process but I'm kind of finally just ready to jump into it so Mm -hmm. (laughs) so yeah but I do a lot of lettering for fun I don't do it really for work at the moment but yeah it's pretty fun so how did you decide to start your own type foundry like was there a defining moment that you remember Well, so I was looking at, um, like, I've had a couple fonts that I've been making, like, in the background or whatever, and people have been asking me for them, and, like, where are they, where can I get these, like, and so I'm, like, I don't know, like, I don't know what to, where to sell them, like, what to do, and there's the big websites, like, my fonts and stuff that I could put them on, but they take, like, a pretty big cut. Mm -hmm. Um, like a percentage of what the profits are. So I was kind of like, maybe I will just sell them on my own and start from the bottom up. So that's what I'm working on right now. So Type Du Nord is the foundry that I'm opening. And um, the website will be fully finished soon, which is kind of crazy. But um, they're also going to be on Creative Market just because it's a big resource. It's like a big place where people buy fonts and it's they take a lot less of a percentage. So it's not quite as bad, but it'll be mostly like demos and stuff. I think the extended ones will be mostly on my own personal website. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So what resources are you going to, to learn about typography? And I'm, and I'm asking, like, I'm, like I told you, I'm even, you know, interviewing you now because I tried to learn about making fonts and typography. It's so hard. (laughs) There's so much. I, Um, you literally spend years and read libraries Mm -hmm. and I was here thinking, well, maybe a month will do it. No, it won't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, so I have like a big, pretty robust library of books that I use as resources. Um, there's one, I think it's called Designing Type, and I think it's by Karen Chen. Mm-hmm. And it's really good. It goes through all of the different letters and like what a serif A should look like and how that compares to different serif letter. So mm-hmm. that, that one is helpful for like really technical things, but I... Um, Actually, there was a type group that I was a part of in Minneapolis called Type Tuesdays, and I only went to it for a little bit, and it's actually, like, not a thing anymore, which is a huge bummer, but uh, Mark Simonson went to it, Mm -hmm. and he's the one that um, 
he designed Proxima Nova. Carolyn Porter was there. Yeah. Okay. So there, those people were super helpful, and Carolyn That's and I have always she's she's great. So if I ever have questions, I'll randomly send her like a, "Can you look this over, please?" <laughs> That's so and amazing. Then, uh, and then there was a class. So do you know? Have you heard of Font Diner? No, I haven't. Uh, the guy that runs it, his name's Stu, and he did a type class, like a font making workshop, last fall. And I took that because I was like, my knowledge of designing a font is like, I've been making it up the whole time and I want somebody to tell me like technically how it's supposed to be moved from like Illustrator into the software or whatever. And so that was super helpful. I like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in the process of opening a type foundry if that class didn't exist. So yeah, it was pretty cool. But That's awesome. Yeah. And is that a private class or like with an institute or? No, he just hosted it on his own. Um, it was over in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, which is like an hour from me. Yeah. And um, it was a two day workshop and we just made a caps font, but it was, and that's actually what Mort is. And where it came from. from? Oh, mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. So that was super awesome. And then that was like, oh my God, this is the most fun I've ever had. So I need to just like do this all the time. <laughs> that's that's very cool and i love mm -hmm. i love the idea of community and coming to people and fi like finding the people who know their stuff and then asking mm -hmm. them about it and taking classes yeah. from them yeah well and he actually talked for a while in that class about font licensing licensing so i had no idea like i had no idea how to even approach that mm -hmm. so he actually sent out like a like a fake like an example template so that we could like use it for our own and that was like I wouldn't so have even helpful. included that. So. Yeah. No, that's yeah. that's super helpful. The in terms of licensing, I have um, and just pricing in general as well. I like the the Creative Artist Guild handbook. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. they they have a font making section, and um, I blogged about it a, f a few weeks ago about mm -hmm. um, you know big fonts custom made fonts and lettering projects in in general. Mm -hmm. And I know here in New York there's the type directors club and mm -hmm. they meet i think one third every i'm not sure if it's every thursday or like the first thursday of a month or something and people can come in and share the fonts and the t whatever lettering project they're working on and get it critiqued by the mm -hmm. rest of the group and everything that's so that's crazy that's, that's so pretty cool. cool as well i'm not sure if they have national chapters type directors club tdc.org um they're pretty know. cool yeah, I don't think they have a Minneapolis one because I think I would have. You would have found that way. <laughs> <laughs> I've googled it a few times. Right. So, yeah. Cool. Okay, so um, you we've mentioned already a couple of fonts, and we're going to circle back to them, and I'm I'm gonna, like I said, edit in some visual references so people know what we're talking about. Um, but can you take us through your creative process? So you mentioned Illustrator, and then the programs. Does it? start mm -hmm. with pencil and paper or do you go straight into illustrator and then how do you go from there so it depends so if it's a complicated font like if it's a serif i usually i have to draw it out with a pencil just to see it and then kind of re-go over it in illustrator just because it's easier it's easier to draw the forms faster like and make mm -hmm. sure they're balanced and then move from there but i usually only draw like a handful that are starting points because like once you draw the B then you have the D like so you don't have to draw all of them but for like um, for Mort in the class we actually just took a specimen that we found like out in the world and um, recreated it from that and mine was pretty geometric so I didn't have to draw that much the S and like a couple other characters I drew on paper just to try to figure out how it could you know work out and be balanced and everything but um but mostly I'll do uh some drawing then go to illustrator and then there's a special way you can copy and paste from illustrator into glyphs and glyphs is what I use some other people use like robofont and things like mm -hmm. that um so there's a certain way you can paste it in where it'll paste it in exactly centered and they'll all paste in proportionally which is the part that I didn't know about <laughs> and Stu's font workshop it helps was like, with kerning doesn't it yeah yeah because then you could just reset all the widths to be like uniform and then go through and custom you know adjust things which is so much easier because I was like 
pasting them in and then resizing them. And then I'm like, how do I <laughs> keep them all the same? But, um, yeah, so that's basically my process. And um, so what are the, like, the five, the handful starters that you do? The B, the H? Um, so they told us to do, um, in the workshop, to start with an O and an H and then move on to, like, the N and a curved letter like the D and then put them together to make sure they're uniform and then use the pieces from those to keep going, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. But yeah. it's, they're... I think there are a lot of different ways you can start and a lot of people have different opinions about it. But I think if you just start with the font, with the letters that the rest of the font is going to be defined from, like they're the ones that make the rules and then mm -hmm. you make the other ones based off that, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it does make sense to me because that's how I learned copper plate. The, we're looking mm -hmm. at calligraphy with the oval is the basic shape is the, the oval form and everything the N, everything else has to be kind of that width. And you mm -hmm. know, they, they, when you overlay one letter on top of each other, they kind of have to all have the same yep. proportions. And mm -hmm. that makes sense. And then you have the the round, the triangle and the square, right? So yep. making yep. sure that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. So um, you're using the, the, the glyphs, the extended one. I just recently mm -hmm. purchased a glyphs mini and um, started yeah. playing with that as well. Well, I bought it in college, actually. I bought it mm. as a student, so it was a lot cheaper, but the license still is valid. So I've had it for a couple of years now, but I just finally am starting to feel comfortable in it. It's kind of like Illustrator where you can learn something new, even though you've been using it for five years. Like, <laughs> Right. Yeah. Well, to, to be honest, it's a little bit daunting to me, the learning. I find the learning curve mm -hmm. with, with uh, Photoshop and Illustrator a little high because I did not go to university mm -hmm. for um, graphic design. Right. My degree is yeah. in HR that has nothing to do with um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's points. True. Ang no yeah. anchor point and what's the basic curve anyway. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's what Glyphs does. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's, it's vector like Illustrator, essentially. Yep. I want to start um, making them just in glyphs, but I just, I'm not as comfortable in it. So I'm like a lot faster in Illustrator. And so mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make that big of a difference. I think if I start moving into making different weights and things, right. making it in glyphs will be better because there's certain ways that you put the anchor points for it to, you know, make to be uniform. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, all right. So you have uh, a few fonts and mm -hmm. let me, I'm just going to name the ones that, that I found because one, of course, is called Doris. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, <laughs> it looks great. It sounds great. <laughs> it's, uh, you describe it as a classic, yes, yet Celtic serif. It looks awesome. Mm -hmm. And then there's Guster, which is a mm -hmm. Western slab serif and Mort, mm -hmm. the chunky display font. Mm -hmm. And so what comes first, the name or the design? Uh, well, in Doris's case, the name came first because it was based off of my grandmother. So the font was based off of her. So the font came after. Mm -hmm. But um, in the case of Mort and Guster, the names came later just because I was trying to name them in something that displays the best characters, but also is like not already taken for a font and also... right somewhat short and kind of memorable so yeah. it's a little tricky but yeah absolutely yeah. um how many iterations did you go through with each of the fonts like how long did it take you from pencil sketch to putting it on creative market um so mort was pretty quick we made that in the weekend but i've made adjustments to it since then and i'm actually working on a full version that has numbers and like a full set of punctuations and all mm -hmm. the language support that is like standard for fonts. Um, accents. We like accents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm working on that right now. So that's taking a little bit longer, but um, that one is pretty geometric. So it was pretty easy, but Doris is still not completely done. It's um, that one I did for a class. So I only spent like three months on it. And it just, serifs are really tricky. So I'm just keep going, re going over it and going over it. And um, I've actually like put it aside for a while because I'm like, I need to stop looking at this one. Um. <laughs> you don't want to hate your grandma. No, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Don't be so um, difficult. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but Guster, I actually found in a book, like this old 80s design book. There was like uh, most of the caps in some lowercase. And I don't know what it's for or what it's from. The book was about logos. So there was just like random mm. spread in there. I don't even know which book it is anymore. But it was years ago that I found it. And then I digitized it. And I found it on my hard drive um, a couple months back. And I was like, I have this font like already made. Waiting for you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So then I was, so then I just uh, put that one together and put it out. And that one still needs some characters with accents in it and stuff. But um, for the time being, it's fine. I mean, it's a display font, so I'm not going to worry about it too much, but it, but yeah, I saw it in the book and I was like, this is just the funniest, weirdest, like chunky font, but I, I think it looks super cool. I really Thanks. like it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it was intended to look Western, but that's what I decided that it was going to be. <laughs> oh, no, it do- it totally does. It yeah. totally fits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned the serifs were a little challenging. Like, can you go a little bit more into what was challenging about designing each font and how did you overcome those challenges? Um, so the serif, it, it's just, I don't have a background in like drawing like in doing the calligraphy versions of the letters so the part the serif is fine for most of them but then randomly like when you get to the m it's like it seems a little too wide but it's very like the adjustments that you need to make are minimal so it's Mm -hmm. it's like moving this over there and then all of a sudden it feels different compared to the end and then you have to go so it's just a lot of like back and forth And I think I just kind of, and I set it up really poorly because it was like one of the first fonts I ever made. So everything's like in pieces. So I think I just really need, I need to revisit it and kind of restructure it. But right. Yeah. So you would like the, the tip would be have a system before you go into the details. Start. Yes. Okay. Well, then distinguish like, um, the crossbar and a lowercase T, like what, is the shape of that and that compared to the F and so on, or the, um, like the top little tail on the B, like, well, what is that going to look like compared to the D? Like, cause right. all mine ended up being different as I went over it and over it. And it, it would have been better to set that up in advance and just copy right. and paste it. <laughs> no, but that's, that's very good to know because like, like we said before, the fonts is the, basically they're little puzzle pieces, right? There is, mm-hmm. you have your stems and you have your basic shapes and then it's how you put them together. So mm-hmm. good tip. Awesome. Yeah. And also, sorry. Yeah. No, go thing. ahead. <laughs> my, uh, my caps ended up looking so much bigger than my lowercase letters and I don't, hmm. It was just like an odd thing that happened when I moved it over to glyphs. And so I think I just need to redo that part. Because oh, so when I drew an illustrator, I used guidelines and everything was pretty uniform and it mm-hmm. felt right. But it, it's different when you start typing with it. So when I moved it over to glyphs, I didn't know how to properly like copy and paste it over. Right. So and that's what you learned that week. Jen. Misproportioned. Yes. Right. And then I learned that in the workshop. Oh, okay, okay. And it helps so much. But that yeah. makes sense. All right. Cool. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned um, that the Mort is a display font. What, is, what does that mean? Can you talk us a little bit through, because one of the questions that I have is how do you decide which file format to use? Like, um, mm-hmm. actually, they, they might be two different things. So how do you decide between making um, a display font versus a regular font? Mm-hmm. And then I'll follow up with the other question in a minute. <laughs> So Mort is a display font in the sense that it it isn't set up to be used very small. So if you Mm -hmm. use it in a paragraph, it probably wouldn't read very well. So it's mostly just for headlines. Mm -hmm. Um, But the way I set it up in the software, I made it so it's just regular because if you, if I were to put it as bold or something, then you might have to like, um, if you switched that font, you know, like if you change the font, you'd have to select like the different weight so I tried to make make it easier and it if I had more weights I would put it as a set one but I usually just do regular if it's just one okay and then um yeah so follow-up question I think I might have uh lost connection with you for a second (laughs) yeah it's been a little spotty I don't know if that's the storm here or okay are we back okay yes I think so okay so the um in terms of file format 
um, like what's your decision making process between web font or open type or true type? Can you speak a little bit to what those differences are and like what's your favorite or what what would you recommend? The open type includes all of the kerning and stuff, the mm -hmm. all the settings that you put in there. The true type I think is an older one, which is Windows friendly mm -hmm. um, for like older versions. So I think most people include both because it's not that hard to export them as both. Mm -hmm. And then the web font is um, just for websites. So like you would include that in the files for the website and that's okay. separate because you can't open that in font finder and like install it. Okay. So a little bit different. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I guess then if you're a new type designer, a new font maker, you'd have to decide who your clients are. So if your clients mm -hmm. are primarily um, designers, then you might be more interested in making web fonts to help them make the websites for their clients and have yep. that specific. Well, and some people will sell them as if you only need the web version, like if you're only doing it for the website, you can just buy that. Oh, or okay. if you need the specific font file for like making print things and digital things, then that's different too. So of course, well, that's that's mm -hmm. the whole deal with branding packages, then, right? Because if yep. the, if a brand, if a company wants to have the same typography on their letterhead or whatever other stationery yep. they might do, yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, let's shift gears a little bit to the the business side of things we talked a little bit about um, the creative process now and i think we're going to go a full circle circle because you've mentioned some of the the marketing stuff um before so f again congratulations on type du nord i think Thank it's you. so great you're mm -hmm. doing your own foundry um so you mentioned in your 10 questions interview that you're a maker of so many things Mm -hmm. And I would like to know, how do you distribute your time between your work and all your other interests? Like, what does a typical day look like for you? Um, well, right now I work full time. So that is most, you know, nine to five. Mm -hmm. But um, I've been sketching a lot more after work because I got really into meditating for a while. And then I was like, I want to meditate in a creative way. So I started just like. I bought Crayola markers and just started doodling with them because they're a very like low pressure kind of thing right. to draw with. So I've been doing that. And I also in the winter, like in Minnesota, it's crazy <laughs> here in the winter. So yeah, <laughs> you get I heard inside a lot. So so knitting is like really nice when you were just sitting and watching a movie or like TV show. And um, that's actually my grandma Doris taught me how to knit. So I I've been knitting for my whole life, so it just seems like a normal thing to do. And then uh, I recently took a spoon carving class, and that's going to be my summer hobby because um, wow. um, because we're going to be camping a lot, and we were taught how to, like, cut the spoon blanks from a log and, like, the whole thing. So basically anything where I can get my hands dirty, like, I'm all for it, so... That's awesome. And you mm -hmm. make t you make time for the font creating every night then? Or is it like a weekend? No, kind not of deal, every or? night. Usually I'll do two or three days a week. And then like Sunday nights, if I don't have anything going on, that's when I'll, I'll usually stay up to like midnight and be a little tired on Monday so that right. I can get more done. But yeah. Yeah. No, because it's that's the thing. Like it's all about the side hustle, isn't it? And mm -hmm. um, not everybody is full time freelance because we have to pay bills and uh, people yeah. have to have multiple, you know, not have to have, but many people have multiple passions and multiple jobs and streams mm -hmm. of income. So just keeping it real, I think that's important to, yeah. to mention as well. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So um, in the questionnaire, you also mentioned something that I really loved so much that you're looking to help increase diversity in the type making mm -hmm. community and that you're looking for women, LGBTQ and um, people of color, artists of color for mm -hmm. collaborations. Can you tell us a little more about that? How's that going? Yes. Um, so I started, I'm starting with a friend of mine um, who's Hmong and she is also a designer and super amazing. And she started making this font a while ago for like a random school project when we were in college. Mm -hmm. And um, I told her the other day or a couple months back, actually, when I had this idea, I was like, 
if you like finish it i will put it i will make it into a font we can put it out together it can be like a collaboration it'd be super fun because the only like most of the people in the type world are just white guys so it's it's a little bit disappointing because the women like are there's so many women in lettering and there's so many women that do a lot of type stuff but they just don't ever ever escalate into font making which is seems kind of like a missed opportunity so I'm trying to um encourage some of my friends to get started in it and um and obviously if people want to reach out um that I don't know yet so right. that's cool too but yeah I just that's think great. it's super fun and I can kind of take the the scary part of it away <laughs> and <laughs> we can put it out together <laughs> right yeah no because I mean so yeah let's let's come back to platforms I mean like you said the the my fonts of this world and um the other websites like how how would you monetize it i mean would you be open to collaborations with with women or people who have their fonts ready and who say i want to put my font on your website like is that something that you would think of um probably probably more down the line i haven't mm -hmm. figured out the logistics of like how we're going to split the profits or anything like that if it's going to be a for sale thing or it's going to be a free thing or mm -hmm. what the deal is um there but um, I think I'd definitely be open to that if it becomes like a bigger thing and people like women and other um, people want to use it as like a place to um, get their work out there. If they're like me right now, but yeah. <laughs> me in the future wants to help them move forward, then that would be super awesome. So yeah. I'd be into it. Yeah. I I would too. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. um, so you creative market. That's one of those places. Creativemarket.com. I have some mm -hmm. fonts on there. I have some um, design elements on mm -hmm. there. I th I've bought design elements from them. Uh, yeah. Design cuts is another one. I think they're based in Britain. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. What what's your what's your take on those online kind of digital marketplaces? Are they a good um, place to start selling? I think it's a good place to start. It's definitely where I'm starting. Um, my only issue with it is it kind of, it it can make fonts seem like a cheaper thing when mm. some fonts are just worth however much, you know, like, because some fonts are really expensive. Like if you were to try to buy Garamond or something, it would be a couple hundred bucks. But, and so those fonts are like worth it. And it's nice for designers that don't have the money to have resources. So I'm torn because it, it, makes fonts overall seem cheaper but then it's also good for people who can't afford it and need access right. to it so i'm just it's i think i'm just fine with it at this point but yeah yeah a lot of people in the type world i think go back and forth on it yeah no i mean definitely like the the monetizing aspect of the art because i think we're we're in the same boat i i love doodling i love lettering mm -hmm. um but monetizing it is one of those things that i'm still working on Mm -hmm. And um, I've been freelance before. I've been self-employed as a coach and consultant before. That was a very different industry. And the price tags for an hourly rate were very different than, mm -hmm. than you know, what I'm charging now. And um, kind of like the Skillshare class that I did, it was a lot of upfront work. It was uh, three, four solid weeks of work. Mm -hmm. And it's all done in the kind of build it and they'll come mindset. Mm -hmm. But then now it's up to me to do the marketing and everything to yeah. drive people to write to drive the traffic to the site etc mm -hmm. so do you have any marketing tips like where do you where do you find your people who do you who who are your ideal clients who do you want to buy the phone um so so right now i'm focusing on um I used to want like a thousand followers or X amount of likes and have these kind of like, right. you know, uh, quantitative goals. Whereas now I'm looking at um, how can I make more like internet friends? Like how can I make meet people that want to collaborate with me? It's more like focusing on the individual follower instead of however much I can get. So like when we were in the passion to paid class, I met a ton of people through that and that was great. And that's actually what made me realize that, um, yeah, like I have 600 followers, which to some people is a lot, to some people isn't a lot, but a lot of those people, like I'll post a story and then they'll respond and we'll have a conversation. And I exactly. find that to be more valuable. And yeah. that's kind of what I'm going for um, when collaborating um, on fonts with people, because then we can both put it out to our markets and like expand 
that way. So it's good for both people. And you have this, then you have a relationship over the project and everything. And it's, I think it's like a win-win for both people involved. So Mm -hmm. I'm focusing more on that kind of marketing instead of like, I'm going to post every single day. I'm going to use these hashtags and whatever, because I'm just kind of like, I'm a real person. I can't post every single day. So yeah. I know. Uh, Quality over quantity. Yes. Definitely. Hashtag quality over quantity. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I, I totally hear you. And we could probably spend another hour or so ranting on social media and what it used to be able mm-hmm. to do and what it is doing now with all the algorithms and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, you can't stay on top of it anymore. So. <laughs> oh my god yeah it's mm-hmm. difficult it's very hard and you know i'm i'm sitting here going i'm i'm going away for four weeks next month mm-hmm. and yeah i'm going to try and schedule something so mm-hmm. because well, that's what i did with 36 days of type and i was on a right. trip so i did it in advance i saw those they were but so it was good like, thank you but it was it was a lot like every day i'd be like oh shoot i forgot to post like i'm four hours late but whatever yeah. like yeah. you just can't really get hung up on it but no that's the thing did you mm-hmm. use any service or did you live post at the time when you posted them no i would just live post so i figured okay. out like which time of day abroad would work for people here right that's where my audience is so right yeah mm-hmm. six seven hours ahead okay mm-hmm. um Sorry, so I asked you who your who your ideal client was. Do you oh, yeah. like do you want to work with designers or you know people writing their own Christmas cards or who are you designing so, for? I guess I haven't really narrowed it down yet. I want to start focusing on sustainability. That's like something I'm super passionate about. Like um, companies that focus on that, but it's mm-hmm. it's really hard to find that. It's like a hard thing to niche to because it's it's going to be a big thing and there are a lot of people like going that way but I think it's still pretty small just in terms of like companies that are coming out with products and things so I think it'll get easier soon but I mm-hmm. think that right now it's it's hard to niche down to that so I've mostly been doing a lot of branding work and stuff and um yeah and it, I want to eventually offer like custom fonts for clients but I think that's maybe a couple of years down the line right I just heard this morning or read um, this morning that the European Union is working on uh, banning plastic straws and plastic mm-hmm. takeaway I containers and, and stuff. So maybe, mm-hmm. you know, I know I'm like, go over I'm the always, pond. <laughs> yeah, I'm struggling because the US is so weird right now with all that stuff. So it's it's frustrating. But I think that helping people to do it on a personal level is also it's valid because not using straws your whole oh, lifetime yeah. worth of straws is so much so oh yeah absolutely mm-hmm. well let's see if i mean hopefully some local business owners are listening to that and then they can yeah. come to you for some personalized custom that branding. would be amazing okay yeah. <laughs> all right well well wrapping it up then your website type do mm-hmm. um yep. how, how did you come up with that name because it's so, like the gare du nord is like that that um, so museum in paris but not really it's Actually, like a Minnesotan thing, uh, Le Trois du Nord is the Star oh. of the North, which is mm-hmm. on the flag. But it's also, my parents have a sailboat on Lake Superior, and the name of the boat is Le Trois du Nord. And I basically, like, grew up on that boat, so oh. I changed it to Type du Nord as kind of like a, like, Type of the North kind of thing. It's also kind of a slight Game of Thrones reference, but, you know. <laughs> I can That's why I was wondering. You can do that on Sunday nights because they're not back until next April. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm waiting um, with breath that is baited. Actually, the the laptop is resting on George R. R. Martin's um, "The World of Ice and Fire" right now, just to elevate it a little bit. It's a big book. It's awesome. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Tangent. Um, mm-hmm. So your website is under construction what what plans do you have for it when is it going to launch what can we expect what are your hopes for the future so i'm working out some logistical things um because i started an llc for the type foundry so that like right. it's all separate um That's smart but i don't i have been doing a lot of research and you maybe know the answer to this but i don't know how to charge sales taxes for digital products it seems like a very specific thing that I don't like no matter what I Google, I can't figure it out. But because nobody knows, every state is different. Yes. So I'm trying to figure out what Minnesota's laws are on that. And Mm. it's been a struggle. But I 
as soon as I figure that out, the website is like 90% done. So it's like so close. Then it'll be up and I'll probably have some teasers for it when I'm closer to. But yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any final words of wisdom that you'd like to leave our listeners and, and viewers um, with? I don't know. If, if anyone wants to chat further, they can reach out. I'm like always ready to type away with people but yeah I don't know I guess that's it <laughs> thank you so much for your time yeah no problem. Um, this was fun all right <laughs> cool so I'll put the recording up on justpickupapen.com and mm -hmm. um, we're going to share it and I look forward I'm I'm very happy that we met virtually in that class and yeah. I'm like we are internet buddies now so that's uh -huh. awesome and yeah. yeah next time you're in New York look us up Yes, I've been dying to go too. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, I'm going to stop the recording now, but you can stay on. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>